Biodiversity underpins all life on Earth. China, a country with some of the world's richest biological resources, has put biodiversity conservation high on its policy agenda. And this month, a UN Biodiversity Meeting COP15 is hosted by the southern Chinese city of Kunming. So how does the country protect its flora and fauna? As the UN Biodiversity Conference is about to begin in Kunming, I'm here to find out what steps China's taking around biodiversity protection and renewal. Kunming is the capital city of Yunnan, a province known as a kingdom of animals and plants. This is the Kunming Botanical Garden, home to almost 9,000 species of plants. Work here focuses on the conservation of plants found in southwest China, especially those which are endangered or endemic. This part of the garden is where many plants whose numbers are dwindling or may become extinct at any time are kept. In recent decades, Chinese scientists have been making efforts to protect them. Yunnan was the first province in China to put forward an initiative to protect plant species with extremely small populations. The protection of rare plants is part of the nation's bigger drive to pursue greener growth and protect the ecological environment. Between 2000 and 2017, China has contributed about 25% of global vegetation growth, the biggest share among all countries. China has set a goal to reach peak CO2 emissions by 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. As well as plants, China's also made great efforts in the protection of wildlife. The country has established a national park system to restore natural habitats and protect endangered species. Major biodiversity conservation projects and tougher regulations have been implemented. China is also the first country in the world to implement ecological red lines. No less than a quarter of the country's land area has been demarcated within these red lines, including zones that are vital for biodiversity. Adapt an ecological red line, and that's unique. And that's, that's one of the reasons why you see um, a recovery of species and gains in conservation. The efforts have paid off. Animals such as the Tibetan antelope, the crested ibis, and the giant panda have been removed from the endangered list. The population of the world's rarest primate is rising. We have heard that the Hainan gibbon is critically endangered on the IUCN red list. We are now up to 35. It is a success story. Ecosystems are being restored. Along the Yangtze, China's longest river, a 10-year fishing ban was imposed to protect aquatic life. And in Yunnan, the epic adventure of wandering wild elephants, which went viral this summer, was also cited by many experts to illustrate China's success in preserving biodiversity. I must applaud China's efforts because when they've preserved those animals like antelopes and elephants, that means they've preserved very large areas of land for those animals to live in. So th there's, a, there's a big picture story going on in China with nature conservation, which is a, a real uh, a modern day global example of how you have to go about conservation. In addition to its protection efforts at home, 
China is also actively involved in international cooperation around the protection of biodiversity. Onions and garlic are a staple of many people's diets. And in this garden behind me, around 60 types have been introduced and bred. The China-Uzbekistan Global Allium Garden in Kunming is the first of its kind in the world. Since its establishment in 2017, it has helped in the protection of the alliums, which are often used as food or medicine. In 2017, we created a Uzbek-Kitaian center of decorative plants in the Institute of Botanics in Kunmeni, the Botanical Garden. И был положен начало очень хорошему опыту сотрудничеству. И уже в следующем году в Ташкенте мы открыли Ташкентский центр глобального сада луков совместно с китайскими коллегами. Сохранение биологического разнообразия в настоящее время стало одним из самых главных проблем современности. فهنا مش بس بتقدم تسهيلات معينة ولكن كمان لها رؤية كبيرة خاصة بالنظم البيئية كلها. China's example uh, with eco civilization and looking at big picture and then putting the big picture to work locally in specific areas exactly what the world needs to do. 人与自然是生命共同体，人类必须尊重自然，顺应自然，保护自然。statements by the Chinese president about people living in harmony with nature and those are really significant and I think the decisions that the Chinese government has made has been exemplary to say the least. China upholds the philosophy of harmonious coexistence between humanity and nature. This explains why China has been redoubling its efforts around biodiversity conservation and guided by these notions the country is expected to make greater achievements leaving to future generations a more balanced ecology where both man and nature can prosper together.